Welcome to the Always Better Than Yesterday YouTube channel. I am your host, Ryan Hartley. This channel is for heart-centered leaders just like you. I hope our time spent together helps you leave a heart print where those around you are left better than yesterday. These interview sessions are sponsored by our great friends at Elevate Online Marketing. For the month of October, I will be turning back the clocks and sharing some of my favorite episodes from the last four years that inspire a message of faith, hope, and love. On episode 194, we revisit episode 88 with Austin Hatch. Austin is a motivational speaker and survivor of two plane crashes. When I set the topic of faith, hope and love for this month, I knew immediately that this episode with Austin is the epitome of what it means to have hope. This is just one of those episodes where I just can't say too much at the start because I think this is just a story that you have to hear directly from Austin himself. You're going to hear pain, you're going to hear tragedy, you're going to hear grief and loss, but you're also going to hear faith, you're going to hear hope. You're going to hear overcoming. It is an incredible conversation. It is with Austin Hatch, survivor of two plane crashes. Enjoy. And welcome back to the Always Better Than Yesterday interview sessions. And I am joined by my very special guest, Austin Hatch. Welcome, Austin. Thanks very much for having me on, Ryan. I really appreciate it. It's great to see you. So you and I connected through John Gordon. I had John on episode 77. And uh, I'd seen that he, you had uh, been a speaker at his Positive uh, Summit. And yep. so I, I Googled you. I Googled you and I, I saw your story and I was like, I need to stop looking. Uh, I need to stop looking because I want to hear it first and foremost from you. I knew that you were going to come on as a guest and I wanted to hear it from you first and foremost. So I'd just love to hear your side of your story. Yeah, so I was uh, I was born to an incredible family in, in the, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, had an amazing childhood. You know, I really feel like the kind of kind of childhood that most people, most kids would dream of. Um, you know, playing hard all day in the summertime, going to school in the fall and winter and spring. And um, yeah, I was blessed to have an incredible family. Um, my dad was a doctor, um, but was also a pilot, like a private pilot. Um, we had our family we had our own small airplane that we used to fly to fly places like the, like go to the lake house. My grandparents have a lake house in northern Michigan. That's where we um, would fly off. And, um, and uh, tragically, on September 1st, 2003, my family and I were flying back from, from the lake house. And um, the airplane tragically crashed and um, claimed the lives of my mom who was 37 and my sister who was 11 at the time and my brother who was only five um which was obviously awful um and i mean it's, it's hard, hard to hard to fathom you know and it was really hard for me to process because i was only eight years old i didn't really my mind wasn't really mature enough to really understand how the significance of that of that loss obviously it was a big loss for anyone anyone that wouldn't recognize that but i was i was young and you know, not having not going home to having a mom to go home to and things like that. Not having family dinners every night was just, it was, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, but my dad was remarried um, about two years later um, to an incredible woman named Kimberly who had three kids of her own. And I worked really hard on my basketball skills. I was kind of like an outlet for me getting away from the grief and the, the you know, the um, emotional trauma, if you will. Of losing that you know so I got I was working really hard on my skills I got to be pretty good um and coach Beeline at the University of Michigan um offered me a scholarship to play basketball at Michigan on June 15 2011 I accepted right then and there because that was my dream school to go there and play and um then uh tragically nine day nine days later on June 24th um my family we were flying to the lake this time the same place we were returning from um, the one the plane crashed in 2003, we said we were flying to the lake this time, and um, the aircraft unfortunately tragically crashed again, and um, my dad and second mom were killed, um, and I um, I probably should have been killed, you know, a long list of injuries, you know, a traumatic brain injury, about the worst, the worst level of traumatic brain injury they've ever seen that's not died. 
um, a pump punctured lungs, broken uh, like five broken ribs, broken my pelvis was shattered. I mean, like there was a long list of stuff. So, but yeah, you know, I um, was in a coma for about two and a half months and um, came out of it. And then the the work, the work to recovery began. So now, you know, it, it'll be nine years since that second accident. Nine years ago, next Thursday. I'm on the June 24th, we the nine year anniversary. And it's crazy to think that, you know, nine years ago, like when I was in a coma, they didn't know that I was gonna wake up, but you know, unfortunately I did and um, had a lot of work to do to, to get back, get back to living life, so. Wow, and what have you gone on to do in the nine years since? Yeah, so I, um, so I committed to Michigan nine days before the action, as I, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Coach Dion was gracious enough to honor my scholarship and keep a spot open for me on the team. Um, so I went to Michigan and uh, had a great four years. Was was a part of the basketball team. I, I I lost a lot of my ability to play due to my due to my injuries. Um, but he he let me be a part of the team, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an amazing amazing time there. And then um, I met my the love of my life. I met, I met my wife my freshman year of college. Um, and we dated, you know, three and a half years and got, got engaged, got married. Um, yeah, we're, we're blessed now. It's, uh, you know, life, life is as good. I, I can't imagine, obviously, if my family was here, it would be a lot better. But, you know, we're, we're blessed. I can't imagine how things would be any, would be any better. Wow. Uh, I have such respect and admiration and, and thank you for, for sharing that. And I just, I opened um, this up to my, my Facebook community to pose questions. Uh, I shared a little bit about your story and said, look, what questions would you love to ask? And I've been inundated and I'm not going to sit here and read out every single question that they've asked, but a lot of them stem around this set, sense of why me? And I, and I guess I'd love to know your perspective on those two events. They are so mathematically crazy in terms of likelihood and I, I just wonder how have you got your head around that yeah well you know mathematically they are crazy and actually in fact um so a, a statistician at the massachusetts institute of technology mit pretty smart guy <laughs> uh, who actually studies you know he actually studies airplane crashes and like, you know, the, the odds of, you know, why they happen, how they happen, and the odds of coming out of them, surviving. And he calculated that the odds of surviving one plane crash with, mul with, with multiple fatalities is one in 3.4 million. So that's pretty slim, right? Mm. Um, I survived two of those though. Two plane crashes with multiple, with multiple fatalities in both, uh, tragically. And the odds of surviving those two, um, so it's one in three point four million for one. It's one in three point four million for another one. So one in three point four million times one in three point four million. The odds of surviving both of those is one in eleven quadrillion five hundred sixty trillion. That's a fourteen digit number on the on the denominator there. So yeah, yeah, you know, the odds are very slim, but you know, I just choose to look at the glasses half full and you know, look at what I'm so blessed to have. Because obviously I've lost a lot, but I don't mm -hmm. think we can allow I can't let two bad events, two bad days in my life outshine all the other amazing days, right? You know, it's like if you're if you're playing a basketball game and you if you only miss two shots in the game, that's a great game, right? If you if you if you shoot 18 for 20 from the field, that's a great game. That's like that that never happens. Like that that's almost unrealistic. So like for me it's like I look at it like, yeah, you know what? I've had however many day however many days I've been alive, you know, twenty five times three sixty five, whatever that is. I've had a lot of great days, but I've had a couple of bad ones too. Um, but I look at it as, you know what, those bad days are what they are. And I'm obviously I'm very saddened and it's tragic that, that they happen. But um, I knew early on, after the second one at least, I knew that if I if I used them the right way. If I, if I persevered 
and kept moving forward, um, I could use that to help other people. And that's what I'm doing now, Spread, traveling around the country, encouraging audiences, encouraging companies and organizations of all kinds to keep moving forward in the face of, of adversity, opposition, challenge. So, Hey friends, I hope you're enjoying the conversation so far. I just wanted to let you know on the 24th of October, I will be welcoming 12 men to the Always Better Than Yesterday Good Fathers program. It is six weeks of online journeying with 12 good men. I really believe that if I can help good men become even better men, then better men will make better dads. It's been 10 years since I became a father and it has been the most fulfilling journey but full of challenges and obstacles that I probably was under-equipped for. I didn't feel prepared for the sacrifice, the tiredness, the impact on our health, let alone what it means to be a good husband and a good teammate um, as we try and journey in becoming the best dad possible. These children don't come with guides and it just for me I I felt like I whilst I wanted to be the best dad I could possibly be I definitely felt a sense of winging it and it doesn't seem to be conversations that men seem to have uh, about what it means to be a dad so I've set up Good Fathers is the first program that I'm offering dedicated specifically to men good men who want to become even better dads come and join us we're starting on the 24th of october use the link in the show notes to come and read more about it but first and foremost this will be a safe space for men to explore their purpose as a father it's going to contain a combination of coaching learning conversation and reflection each week we'll follow a semi-structured topic of conversation i'll support you with resources and prompts designed to facilitate a powerful transformative experience you will not only learn from me but from each other and shared experiences i do not have all the answers but i will hope to create an environment and a space for you and 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 other good men to reflect and to create much more of an intentional style of parenting that will help you leave that legacy by becoming the best possible dad that you can be. If you know a good man that would benefit from this container, this time and space, please do share them the show notes. It's www.abty.co.uk forward slash good hyphen fathers. That's good fathers on our website. Here we go. Back to the conversation huge respect does faith feature in your journey absolutely absolutely um so you know i i look at it as um so obviously i've been you know i, I had some challenges right some trials if you will but james 1 12 says blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having withstood the test that person will receive the crown of life that the lord has promised to those who love him it doesn't say if you, you know what, if you persevere under trial, things might work out for you. You might get lucky. You might get lucky. Like your life might be good. It doesn't, no, it says, it says, if you persevere under trial, you're going to be blessed. And I mean, what more can you ask for? I mean, so yeah, obviously, you know, that's not to ignore the reality of the challenges mm. and the loss that I've, that I've unfortunately had to, had to cope with and deal with. But, mm. you know, I look at it as how blessed am I to have made this, this, come back from what happened to him because it's like you know a lot of people who would go through something similar they would like probably wouldn't be able to wouldn't have come out of it the way we have and i've just I, and I'm not, I'm not taking credit for it i'm just saying i'm so blessed to have had what i like to have had the doctors nurses like i had my whole family you know basically my all my friends in fort wayne basically people put their life on hold to help me overcome it and it's like and what more can I ask for? So, wow. John Gordon said in in my interview with him that uh, faith didn't make it easy; it just made him stronger. And yeah. and I just would you say that's been your experience too? Yeah, you know, um, I de- I I definitely think that you know faith. Yeah, it de- yeah, it doesn't make it easier. Like I mean, it, it doesn't make. Because you have faith, it doesn't mean, you know, God says, you know what, free pass, you're going to have no challenges, like, I'll make it easy for you. He obviously didn't say that. Um, I like what John said, though, it does make you, make you stronger. And, you know, you can, um, if you if you believe in something bigger than yourself, 
um, and you have and you have a faith and a trust that that all things will work together for the good of those who love Him and who are called according to His purpose. Like it says in Romans eight twenty eight, if you believe that all things work together for good, if you if we maintain our faith and believe that all things work together for good, it's like man. You know what? This I didn't wish this on myself. I'm not necessarily thankful that it happened, but when I overcome it, not if I overcome it, when I overcome it, not only am I gonna be, am I gonna be better for it, but there's gonna be good that comes out of this too. So, yeah, I think I think you know faith faith is very important to me, and you know I think that if we, because you you got to believe in something, right? Whatever you believe in. And I'm not telling I'm, gonna, I'm not here to tell people what they should believe, but we got to believe in something bigger than ourselves. Yeah, the words overcome it are the name that you use for your business, and I just love to know your your connection to those. What what do, does those those two words really mean to you? Overcome it. It's like so overcome. You know, persevere. Um, you know thrive in the midst of your trials overcome it get better because of it and not allow we shouldn't allow something that happens to us to determine the course of our future mm. and it is whatever whatever the obstacle may be for you you know overcome it and it, it's a it's a i like because it's a simple it's it's very simple and like you know it's because it, the the mission um of our of our business is that is to help people overcome um, whatever obstacle they whatever obstacle they face, whatever whatever it is, everyone mm -hmm. is facing something different. It doesn't say overcome the loss of your job, or overcome the family trouble, or overcome a divorce, or overcome you know an injury. Because mm -hmm. everyone faces something different. So I mean, I just wanted we wanted to keep it applicable to all people, and it's. Whatever you face, our, the goal of our of, of, my, of me traveling to speak to your company or organization, the mm -hmm. goal of my message to any audience is to, is to help them maybe gain a different perspective. Um, you know, that kind of, oh, okay. You know, I can look at adversity this way. It's not all negative. I can take positives from it. If I keep my head down, keep moving forward um, and put it, put in the hard work. So yeah, overcome it. You know, whatever whatever obstacle anyone in the audience faces, my the goal my goal is that my message will encourage them just to keep working hard to overcome it. Yeah. I would really love to understand the short time period after the second crash. So let's put this into perspective. You've got some serious life-threatening injuries to recover from. You've got the grief of your the loss of your family you've got the realization that this is the second time this has ever happened to you and your future is uncertain with with college what a situation to find yourself in anyway let alone being a young man yourself just take take me back to there if, if you're able to and what was the reality like what was your everyday like yeah well you know i was so i was in um the accident happened, the second accident happened in Northern Michigan. And I was in the, I was transported to the hospital in Munson, Munson Medical Center, which is in Traverse City, Michigan, which is North, Northern Michigan. Um, and I was in, a, I, I was, I was there in a, and they induced a coma um, for, they induced a coma for a couple of days. Um, but my, but I, but my body just stayed in the coma for about, about about seven more weeks mm. um just because my body needed it and i needed to rest and recover and um and then i was airlifted when i was still in a coma i was airlifted to the um, rehabilitation institute of chicago um it's like it's the number one um at the time when i was there um i think i think it has a different name now i think some other company bought it and changed the name but at the time that I was there, the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, the RIC, is, uh, was the number one pediatric brain injury rehabilitation center in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I mean, I look at it, it's like, how blessed was I to be able to go, go to somewhere like that? The number one place in the world. Not a, not, not, not a good place. Number one in the world. And so I went there. 
um, came out, came out of my coma, kind of woke, kind of woke up from my coma, if you will, which took a, a month or so to kind of come out of it and get, come back to terms with things, maybe two months. Um, but yeah, I realized that, you know, that I had a long road ahead of me. Um, and I just, just, just started to put it, put in the work. I mean, I mean, cause it's, I think the biggest thing for a lot of us is sometimes we just have to get started. Like that getting started is the hardest step towards achieving our goal, towards overcoming whatever obstacle we face. So yeah, as soon as I, I, I learned all that I had lost and well, well, obviously I knew all that I had lost, but I, and I, but I knew that I had to, I could, I could, I couldn't focus on that though. I could focus. I, I had to shift my focus to, okay, you know what? It's terrible what I lost, but grieving that loss, spending time thinking, why did this happen to me? That's not going to help me get better. That's not going to help me accomplish my goal of recovering so that I can play at Michigan. Coach Bion came to visit me in the hospital at, at the RIC in Chicago and said, Austin, whenever you're able to get to Michigan, I can't wait to coach you. I can't wait to have you on our team. I mean, how cool is that? He was, he, I mean, mm. I, I, was pretty, I was pretty good when he offered me a scholarship, right? I got hurt. I couldn't walk. I was in a wheelchair. I couldn't walk because my legs were broken, but they had hit up at that time. And the reason I couldn't walk is because my brain couldn't tell my legs to put one foot in front of the other, right? Mm. It's crazy. So, and he, and here's, here's one of the best college coaches in the country. Mm. Comes to the hospital and tells the guy that he recruited and they, but got injured. I can't wait to coach you. I can't wait to have you on our team. And so it's just powerful. Um, what, you know, did that, what did that show of leadership give you? Yeah, so, I, so one of the things I talk about when I talk about overcoming adversity, well, I, talk, I talk about grit. Um, and I use grit as an acronym. Um, grit's driven by knowing our purpose first and foremost. Um, we need to be working for something bigger than ourselves. And then the four components of grit are the four letters, the G's, the stands for the growth mindset, which views adversity as opportunity. We can grow from anything we experience in life. You know, adversity doesn't define us, it can refine us. The mm -hmm. R is the decision to be resilient, to focus on our response to the adversity we face rather than focusing on the adversity itself. And prioritizing our response by controlling what we control and then the eye is integrity and of course integrity is about doing the right thing and no one is looking but especially in the context of overcoming any obstacle i think integrity is about following through in our commitments and staying true to what we said we would do especially when our circumstances change i, I tell stories with every letter and with with i i talk about coach beeline right he followed through on his commitment he he made a commitment to me when things were good when I was playing well, but then when things changed, he offered me a scholarship. He could have very easily given that scholarship to someone else, mm -hmm. but he stayed true to what he said he was going to do and followed through, even though the circumstances changed. And you look at that from a leadership perspective. If you're any of the other guys on my team, any of my other teammates at Michigan, who would not want to run through a brick wall, so to speak, for a guy that, that is that, selfless and that that honest and has that much integrity you know who stays true to what he said he would do especially when our circumstances change and i think about it in business it's easy to make commitments to people when things are good right but then when something else comes up when our circumstances change you know it's easy to say oh yeah you know i made this commitment when things were good when i when i wasn't when i didn't have this problem to deal with but now that i'm dealing with this i can't do what i told you i was going to do because i right so, yeah, so I think, but I think if we can make it a priority to always follow through on our commitments, especially when our circumstances change, I think that's an opportunity to create a great competitive advantage. So, how did you pay him and the team back? How did you, what role did you take up within the team? I did my best to, to help, help the team in any way that I could. I tried my best to, to always do what the team needed, um, whether I was shagging balls in practice, encouraging guys. Um, to, to, you know, to get better, being positive, cheering them on from the, from the sidelines, um, you know, and helping with drills and practice and do really, you know, I, I just did whatever I could to help the team. Um, and I'd like to think that, um, like, cause all, everyone on my team knew, know, knew the situation, obviously. And I'd like to think that, you know, uh, me being positive and optimistic and, um, working hard to do the, to do what I could to help the team. Because I looked at it as a rising tide can lift all boats, right? You know, if I fill my role to the best of my ability, there's no way that can't have a positive impact on all, all my teammates. So, 
I just try to take take it upon myself to fill my role to the best of my ability. I love that. Such an inspiration. And I just would love to know your perspective on God's plan for you. Is that becoming clearer? Is that something you have an understanding of? I, I'm starting to get an understanding. I don't know that we'll ever fully understand God's plan. None of us ever will. I don't, I don't, maybe we will, but, um, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, so I'm married now and, um, I, you know, my, my wife, that's part of, part of God's plan for sure. And I think I had an incredible father, you know, obviously I'm a little biased, but, you know, I think, you know, my father, my father was the best dad in the world. Mm -hmm. And, um, obviously hopefully every son thinks that but you know i think the lesson that i learned from him part of my part of the i think part of god's plan is for me to instill those lessons in our children someday whenever we're blessed with the family and yeah i just i can't wait to to to, because so my dad and i were best friends right and um i can't wait to be on the other side of that deal and fill the fatherly role who knows if me and if I'll be best friends with our sons or our daughters, but I just can't wait to have that relationship. Um, and just, just teach our kids about life and how to live, lead by example. Um, because an example is always better than an, an opinion, right? <laughs> you know, if I, if I, if I t- say, you know, I think, I think this is how you should do it, but like, it's, it's better if I could show them. Right. That's what my dad did. My dad didn't, I mean, obviously he had to, he had to parent me and tell me what was right and wrong, but he showed me by how he lived his life every single day, how he treated people, how he went about his work and business as a doctor, how he, right. And so I think that if I, I, I can't wait for just the opportunity to, to show, to, to hopefully show our kids, um, you know, the right way to do things. So. Love that. Do you, think about legacy much yeah um i do because my my dad uh, my whole family um but my dad uh, you know he's revered in the whole city of fort wayne where we're from as one of the one of the, one of the greatest men to ever be there one of the greatest doctors like you know, you know like and i think about like what do people what do i want people to say about me after i die because I mean, we're all, because you know, the two things we all have in common is the day we're born and the day we die, right? Mm-hmm. And what happens in between those two days lies our legacy. The legacy will leave, right? And so I think that you know, my hope is that I continue to have an opportunity to inspire, encourage, motivate people to you know overcome. And I hope that you know, when whenever that, whenever it's my time to go. I hope that I can be remembered as someone who spent his life serving others and using what he had been through to help other people, help them get better, help them overcome, help them thrive in the midst of their adversity. Mm. You talk about being blessed. And I just wonder, do you see, and the, and the mathematics involved as well, do you see yourself as, as lucky or, or unlucky to have been involved in, in two? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not, I don't really believe in luck so much. I mean, because (laughs) luck is kind of what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Right. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe, you know what, maybe winning the lottery is lucky, but for the, for the majority of us, luck doesn't really have, I don't think luck really exists. I think it's, maybe it does. Um, you know, I'll say it's unfortunate. It's tragic what, what happened to me, but I've been so blessed to have been able to come out of it the way that we have. I say we, cause it was a team effort. Doctors, nurses, therapists, all my family and friends, the way that we ca- everyone was in, I was the only one who was in the plane crash, but I was the only, only one who was impacted. Everyone was impacted, right? Mm-hmm. In different ways, obviously. Um, maybe my impact was more traumatic and tragic than others with, with the injuries I, I sustained and stuff. But yeah, you know, I, I look at it as, yeah, it's unfortunate that those days happen. It's terrible that those days happen, those events happen, but how blessed am I to have mm-hmm. been able to come out of it the way that I have? How? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, I don't think, you know, 
luck, 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 maybe luck does exist. Maybe there are some things that just happen, you know, but like, I think, it, I mean, that all the blessings that I have in my life have got to come from somewhere. They can't just be an accident, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. So, yeah. I felt slightly uncomfortable asking that question and, and hearing your response, I now know why, because I too don't believe in luck. And, and um, your answer to that question was beautiful. Thank you for that. I, um, my ethos is all about helping people be better than they were yesterday. I'm just curious to know what the phrase better than yesterday means to you. Well, that was, that was part of my, 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 um, my mantra, part of my mindset in, in my road to recover when I couldn't walk, mm. but okay. So I'm in a, I'm, I'm coming out of a coma right now. I'm in a hospital bed. I can't walk. I can't go to the other side of the room and grab a tissue to blow my nose because I can't walk over there. And I, have to have, I have to ask someone, hey, can you, can you hand me that tissue so I can blow my nose? Because I can't go over there and get it myself, right? Crazy situation. So I had that, I was in that situation, but I wanted to get to Michigan. I said, okay, a lot's gonna happen between now and then. I got, I have this massive goal of getting to Michigan. I have this goal that's on top of a, of a mountain, metaphorically speaking, right? But there's, and I see, I see where I want to go. I see the goal at the top of the mountain. I see the prize at the top of the mountain. But I have to recognize there's also a mountain there. It's not just like, it's not just going to be a, a straight line to the goal. It's going to be, you know, there's going to be, there's things to climb, metaphorically speaking. Mm -hmm. And I just said, okay, you know what? I want to do something every day that, that, get, that, that gets me a little bit closer to achieving that goal. Some days were big. Like the day I learned to walk again. That was a big day. The day I learned how to how to play basketball again, that was a big day. Mm. Um, the day I went back to school was a big day. The day, right? But like all the all the little days too. You know, the day I, you know, the day I, you know, learned how to do what, whatever, whatever it may be. Or or yeah. or sometimes, you know, some of the things didn't happen. Maybe it wasn't a day. Maybe it was a week. And but I think it's so important to set little goals and. Um, because we see that big goal that we want to achieve, that lofty one, which is great. Yeah. But I think it's important to, to, to set little goals that we can accomplish along the way too, because if, if all we see is that big goal, and say, say the big goal takes a year to achieve. It's January 1st, you want to achieve something by December 31st, for the sake of the argument. If, you, if we don't have any, if we're not accomplishing anything on the way there, if we're not enjoying the process of getting to that big goal, we're going to get burned out. So I think part of being better than we were yesterday is recognizing that, yes, we do need to, um, you know, work towards these lofty goals. But, you know, as John says, you know, set a goal of doing something. Like for me, I set the goal of doing something today that I couldn't do yesterday. Mm. And if you, if we can just do that, that'll keep us, keep us, um, that'll keep the competitive fire in us, I think, because it's like, you know, for me, Yes, obviously the you know the the stuff that happened, the end injuries and everything. Obviously, I had so many people help me getting better. But I think part of the reason, um, I I I had this internal drive to compete against myself, and I think part of being better today than we were yesterday, it starts with ourselves because we can't always compare. We're not always competing against other people. Like for me, in my road to recovery, there wasn't anyone who was going through the same thing. So I couldn't compare myself. Okay. Am I doing better than him or her yesterday today? Or right. But if I could say, okay, you know what? I'm not competing again. Like in golf, for example, unless you're playing in a tournament, it's you against the golf course, right? It doesn't really matter what the other people do. And it's like in a road to, in my road to recovery, it was me against myself. It didn't matter what other people were doing. I mean, obviously it didn't matter, but I think that, you know, part of one way that we can, increase the likelihood of getting better every day is having an internal drive to compete against yourself. So, yeah, I love that. Great answer. Um, how can people find out more about you, more about your, your story and how you help people? How can they connect with you? Yeah. So I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, that's probably the best way for any, if there's, if there's any, any viewers and you know, where you are, that have interest in connecting with me, probably, probably LinkedIn is the best way, or I can, I can email you my information. Um, and when, I don't know if this podcast is live, 
um, or if it'll post at a later date, but I can give you my information and you can, you can post that. Yep. Uh, I would love to, I don't know if it'll ever be an opportunity. Obviously right now with COVID-19 things are on hold as far as the speaking business is concerned, but you know, whether I, if there's anyone in, in, you know, England that wants to do a virtual event or I'd be honored to come there and speak sometime too. I don't know if there would, if that would ever happen, but if there's any company or organization that would like to have us, we'd, I'd love to come. Love to come, uh, inspire, you. inspire, encourage, and motivate everyone mm -hmm. to keep moving forward. Love that. We'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. Austin, thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, and sharing your heart and your story. And um, I'd just love for you to leave us with a, a final thought from your good self. Yeah. Um, my my biggest thing is the, like the, the title of our business, Overcome It. The name of our business, overcome it. Whatever you're facing, I don't know what it is for you. Any, any, anyone in the audience, I don't know what it is, but um, I encourage you just to make the make the decision to overcome it. Make the decision to prioritize our response to the adversity we face, rather than dwelling on the adversity itself. And if it, if we, may, some of us won't face things that won't be able to overcome. Um, but I just encourage you to make that decision to just to overcome it, just work at it, keep at it, stay, um, try to stay positive too, because in the midst of that trial, um, I think our decision to stay positive is a competitive advantage. Um, and yeah, I think just, you know, keep working. It's, it, whatever you face, probably won't overcome it today or tomorrow, but if we work, if we work hard enough or long enough, um, we'll overcome it. It's not if, it's when. So I believe in all you guys. I know you'll overcome. Keep working at it and keep thriving in the midst of that adversity and keep, keep controlling the controllables that we control, our attitude, our work ethic, things like that. So I wish you guys all the very best. Uh, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to staying in touch. You're an inspiration. Thank you so much once again. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Take care of yourself. Thank you for making it to the end of the interview here on YouTube. I hope that our time spent together has left you a little bit better than before you push play. Before you go anywhere, please leave a comment down below. Some of your key reflections, your key takeaways. I love hearing from you and what this conversation has inspired in you. Let me know what you're going to do as a result of this conversation. I will be back next Wednesday where I will share another inspiring guest. To make sure that you don't miss that, please do subscribe hit the bell and you will be notified as soon as it goes live. If you're curious to know how I, through Always Better Than Yesterday, can serve you, your team, your organisation, please do visit alwaysbetterthanyesterday.com and it will be my honour and privilege to help you in any way I can. Keep leading, my friends. I've been Ryan Hartley, host of the Always Better Than Yesterday podcast here on YouTube. Always love.